Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris, and in this episode, we are going to talk more about classes. Last time, we learned how to create our own data types. We know that they are a collection of data and methods, and that the values can be different from instance to instance. We also know that in order to create an instance of our class, we need to use its constructor. And this is where we will start today. Let's have a look at the constructor that we created. As you can see, it is empty, so nothing special is going on whenever we create an instance. An empty constructor like this is also called the default constructor. If you don't specify one yourself, the compiler will generate one for you internally. If, however, you wish to do something whenever you create an instance, you can do it right here. For example, we could specify a default name and age for every human that we create. Now, whenever we create a new human, his name will be Bobby and his age will be 35. We could also print out a little message whenever the constructor has finished. Now let's head back to our main class. Get rid of this part right here. Now we just have a human instance called myHuman, and we urge it to print out its name. We see that the constructor has finished, and that the name of myHuman is Bobby. Now this is a step up from before, because now we don't have to specify any values for this instance after we're done with the construction. However, not every human in this world is called Bobby, and they are not 35 years old. Wouldn't it be great if you could specify the values at construction time? Well, you are in luck. Let's go back to our human class. Last time I told you that constructors work just like methods. As such, we also have the ability to overload them. We can create a second constructor that takes in parameters. We can then use those parameters and assign them to our variables. Now this is something tricky that I actually didn't intend to do, but this is as good a time as any to show you. See how the parameters are called name and age, just like our variables up here? This is a problem, because how would we know which name and which age we actually mean in the code? Here's what I mean. This doesn't make much sense, does it? Even Eclipse is complaining. Let's see what it has to say. The assignment to variable name has no effect. Now, there are a few ways around this. The most obvious one would be just to rename the parameters, because they don't stay long anyway, so we can call them whatever we like. Alternatively, we could have given special names to our fields. A common practice is to call your fields like this. m underscore and then the name of your field. The m stands for member, because fields are also sometimes referred to as member variables. Personally, I would say that this is a very good approach. It separates the fields of this class from outside data quite easily. But if you really wish to use the same names for your parameters and your fields, there is a third option. If you want to absolutely make clear to the compiler that you're talking about the field of the class, you can use the this keyword. Using the this keyword, you make explicitly clear that you're talking about the fields from this class. Usually this is not required, and you only really need it when you're dealing with an issue like this. My personal opinion would be to stick with flagging your fields as member variables. Let's head back to our main class again, and make use of our new constructor. Now here's the interesting part. We can either choose the constructor that doesn't take any parameters, 
or we put in two parameters, a string and an integer. And of human2 now uses his print name method. We can see our second constructor in action. Now what we could do as well is use our data type itself as a parameter. We could write a method either in the main or in our class and operate on human instances. If for some reason we wanted to, we could let our humans punch each other, maybe for a boxing game or something. For that, let's go back to our human class. And in here, we create a new method called punch. And in order to punch somebody, we need to have a target. Now don't ask me why this is the first thing that came to my mind. Maybe I just want to play Mike Tyson's punch out again. Anyway, let's print out a little message. We are going to print out our own name and then the name of our target. So let's see this in action. Let's say my human punches human2. Because as a parameter we specified a human instance. And if we run this program, Bobby punches Stanley. What a jerk. Now Stanley of course fights back. Run this again. And Stanley at least tries to put up a decent fight. Anyway, the goal of this is to show you that we can pass around instances of our own classes and access their individual data. If we go back to our human class, we can see that here we are talking about a name, which is the name of the instance that is using this method at the time, and here we are talking about the M name of the target. So obviously these values are going to change depending on which instance uses the punch method. Now if you wanted to make a game out of this, you could add more fields like strength, health, whatever you need, and do some clever calculations in here. Of course it's not really interactive, so it's just gonna be a show fight, but I hope I conveyed the idea well enough. Anyway, this is all the time I have for this episode. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments, and I'll be glad to help you out. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. See you next time!